Othello is one of Shakespeare's great tragedies. Along with Hamlet, King Lear and Macbeth, it is about the destructive power of evil. Othello tells the story of a human struggle, of a virtuous hero and of dark temptation. Othello is the greatest general in the Venetian army. He is a Moor, which means he is from either North Africa, Southern Spain or the Middle East. Othello's position and stature have aroused envy and hostility in certain prejudiced locals, and Othello himself is undermined by internal insecurities over his ambiguous position as a powerful, but still alien, authority figure in Venice. Othello has earned the trust and admiration of the Duke, and he has inspired love in Desdemona, an aristocratic Venetian who becomes his wife. Desdemona is Othello's beloved wife. She is young, beautiful, independent, and represents innocence and virtue. She refused to marry any of her wealthy Venetian suitors. The love that Desdemona and Othello share is far more than simply physical love. She responds to his nobility and courage. He reveres her gentleness and compassion. They are truly soulmates, but the idolizing element present in Othello's elevated love also makes it vulnerable. The smallest doubt about Desdemona, no matter how unjust it may be, will plunge Othello into anguish and despair, for his life depends on her faith. The villain, Iago, is the main antagonist of the play. He has the most lines and is the only character whose inner monologues are vocalized in a series of bitter, deviously scheming soliloquies. Othello is about Iago's evil plot, the power of vice to destroy virtue. He is a cunning manipulator, a betrayer of trust, tricking the other characters into hating one another. Early in the play we learn that Iago is jealous of Cassio's promotion to lieutenant over him, but his poison goes even deeper. Amelia is Desdemona's trusted and devoted lady-in-waiting. She is also Iago's wife. She is sharp-tongued and cynical, but she loves Desdemona and does not know the extent of Iago's evil schemes. When, after murdering Desdemona, Othello tells Amelia that Iago convinced him that Desdemona was unfaithful, Amelia has the courage to reveal the truth in order to clear her beloved mistress's name. Along with Iago, Rodrigo is the second of our two main antagonists. Rodrigo is a wealthy, rejected suitor of Desdemona. Still eager to win her favor, he becomes an easy victim of Iago's plots and gives Iago money, which he foolishly believes Iago is using to promote his suit. Rodrigo is Iago's girl, or dupe, the easily manipulated puppet of a very cunning villain. Iago says that he regards his fool, Rodrigo, as his purse, in other words, the source of his funds. Cassio is young, handsome, loyal and gentle, but slightly impressionable. Early in the action, we learn that Iago is envious of Cassio's promotion to the rank of lieutenant. His duty is to serve and protect Othello. Later on, Cassio is stripped of his position, but is determined to be reinstated. Because of this, Cassio becomes crucial to Iago's plot to drive Othello and Desdemona apart. Bianca is a courtesan, and because of this, she is a free woman. In 1603, when Othello was written, married women were seen as the subordinates of their husbands, while courtesans, such as Bianca, were free agents in charge of themselves. Although a courtesan, Bianca displays genuine affection for Cassio, and expresses jealous anger when he asks her to do him the favor of copying the strawberry embroidery on the handkerchief that he has found in his room. Brabantio is a Venetian senator who is also Desdemona's father. When Rodrigo, spurred on by Iago, tells him of the marriage of his daughter to the general Othello and how they kept it secret from him, he is shocked 
and angered by the betrayal. The Duke is the official authority in Venice. He respects Othello without prejudice and is responsible for sending Othello and his army to Cyprus. If you're enjoying this introduction to Othello, please go through to the Imagination Lab website where you can subscribe to renowned Shakespeare scholar Digby Ritchie's outstanding Othello Masterclass. If you're studying Othello, the Masterclass would assist you in expressing and substantiating your own viewpoints as clearly and persuasively as possible. It is also a guide to successful literary analysis as much as an exploration of the dramatic masterpiece. The action starts with the secret marriage of Othello and Desdemona. Knowing how jealous he would be, Iago persuades Rodrigo to tell Brabantio, Desdemona's father, about Othello and Desdemona's secret marriage. Enraged, Brabantio, accompanied by Rodrigo, sets out to arrest Othello. The Duke has called Othello to the Senate to brief him on his next campaign to defend Cyprus from the invading Turks. While they are all at the Senate, Brabantio raises the matter of Othello and Desdemona's secret marriage. Othello and Desdemona defend their union, giving the noble reasons they are so deeply in love. Desdemona requests if she can accompany Othello to Cyprus, and then Othello asks Iago to bring his wife, Emilia, to assist Desdemona. And so Iago's evil plan to destroy Othello's life begins to unfold. Realizing his influence over him, Iago persuades Rodrigo to also follow the army to Cyprus. On arrival in Cyprus, Othello and his army find out that a storm has severely damaged the entire Turkish fleet. To celebrate, Othello orders a party to mark both the victory over the Turks and his marriage to Desdemona. Othello leaves the party early to spend some time with Desdemona, leaving Cassio in charge. Iago encourages the reluctant Cassio to indulge in drinking, despite Cassio's weak head for liquor. Iago then engineers a drunken brawl, persuading Rodrigo to provoke a fight with Cassio. The brawl awakens Othello, enraged by the eruption of disorder and riot on an island under his command, Othello strips Cassio, his closest friend of his rank. Devastated by his demotion, Cassio turns to Iago for comfort. Iago prompts Cassio to ask Desdemona to advocate for him with Othello to convince Othello to reinstate Cassio as his lieutenant. On the morning after the fight, Cassio, after first approaching Emilia, asks Desdemona if she would help him by persuading Othello. Desdemona agrees, saying that she would continue to speak on Cassio's behalf. Desdemona's pleas for Cassio to be restored to his position as lieutenant are motivated simply by a generous wish to repair the once close friendship between her husband and Cassio. Othello witnesses the end of Desdemona and Cassio's conversation. This is when Iago takes the opportunity to sow the seeds of suspicion in Othello's mind that something might be going on between Cassio and Desdemona. Iago manipulates the trusting and open-hearted Othello with demonic skill, insinuating and later claiming to prove that Desdemona is conducting an adulterous affair with Cassio. Othello is extremely distressed by the idea of Desdemona's infidelity and complains of a pain in his head. While trying to help him, in the garden Desdemona accidentally drops her handkerchief. The handkerchief, embroidered with strawberries, was originally a gift from Othello to Desdemona. Later, the handkerchief is found by Emilia, who gives it to Iago. The opportunistic Iago, already suspecting that the handkerchief might prove useful in his plots, had already been asking his wife to steal it for him. The treacherous Iago's next step is to plant Desdemona's handkerchief in Cassio's quarters. Othello returns to Iago 
and furious at the suggestion of his wife and Cassio, demands evidence from Iago. Iago lies, saying that he has heard Cassio murmuring about Desdemona in his sleep, and adds that he has also even seen Cassio using Desdemona's handkerchief. In fact, Cassio, unknown to the others, is engaged in a secret affair with Bianca. Cassio passes the handkerchief on to Bianca, telling her that he found it in his chamber and asks her to copy the design. To prove his claims, Iago arranges for Othello to eavesdrop a conversation Iago has with Cassio. Without mentioning her name, Iago mocks Bianca's obsession with Cassio. When Cassio is amused by Iago's jibes, the enraged Othello incorrectly assumes that Cassio is ridiculing Desdemona's foolish obsession, the obsession of a woman whose affections Cassio has won. Othello then also hears Bianca arriving and angrily returning the handkerchief to Cassio, convinced that another woman, some minx, has given Cassio this love token. Othello erroneously assumes that Desdemona was the one who gave Cassio the handkerchief. With his reasoning powers undermined and his emotions warped by Iago's slanderous suggestions, Othello believes that Desdemona's pleas on behalf of Cassio, compounded by the conversation between Cassio, Iago and then Bianca, he has just overheard, confirm her guilt. Othello plans to murder Desdemona. Iago promises to kill Cassio. Meanwhile, completely outside of Iago's schemes, messengers from Venice, including Lodovico, a Venetian senator, arrive, bringing instructions for Othello to return to Venice and to leave Cassio in command of Cyprus. Othello, inflamed with rage, turns upon his innocent wife in public striking her in front of Lodovico. The trusting Desdemona appeals to the scheming Iago, whom she, like so many others in the tragedy, believes to be honest, to assist her to regain her husband's love. Iago claims that Othello is simply burdened with responsibilities and anxieties and promises to assist her. After Emilia and the bewildered and distressed Desdemona have left Iago, an angry Rodrigo accuses Iago of deceiving him in order to obtain money. Iago promises that Rodrigo will enjoy the sexual favours of Desdemona, provided that he kills Cassio. Rodrigo is initially unwilling, but eventually agrees to do so. Iago incites Rodrigo to stab Cassio in the dark. However, Cassio succeeds in wounding Rodrigo and Iago has to resort to attacking Cassio from behind, severely wounding his leg. Iago then chooses to kill Rodrigo, who is beginning to suspect that he has been duped and who knows too much about Iago's treachery and plotting. Mistakenly convinced that Cassio is dead, Othello commits himself to executing Desdemona for infidelity. He ignores his wife's horrified protestations of innocence, and he strangles and smothers her in their bedchamber. When Emilia enters the bedchamber, now a scene of horror and murder, Othello tells her that he acted on the advice of honest Iago and that he has been convinced by the evidence that Iago provided. Appalled by this revelation and of the enormity of her husband's evil, Emilia reveals the fact that she gave the lost handkerchief to her husband. Desdemona never gave it to Cassio. Valiantly defying her husband's fury, she reveals the truth and Iago kills her for doing so and runs away. Iago does not get away. He is immediately caught by Cassio and the messengers and is dragged back to Othello. Othello, furious with Iago, calls him the devil and stabs him. Although wounded by Othello, Iago does not die, nor does he offer any explanations for his vile actions. There is a mysterious element about his diabolical evil. 
By allowing Iago to survive through to the end, Shakespeare suggests that evil can be defeated but never eliminated. Othello finally accepts culpability for the atrocity he has committed. He admits his responsibility for the deed and punishes himself for the murder by committing suicide. With his love for Desdemona restored, he dies kissing her dead lips. He regains his earlier heroism and dignity. At the end of the play, Cassio is appointed in Othello's role as general and is instructed to punish Iago justly for his wicked crimes. If you're enjoying this video, please do subscribe to the Imagination Lab YouTube channel to get 